Hey guys, I'm Eddie, and this is my first ever Journal Club-ish that I make for YouTube. The article that I'm going to talk about today is regarding vitamin C. Now there's a lot of talk about vitamin C because we're dying for something new in sepsis, and hopefully this is going to be something that's going to help out our patients from pretty much dying from a, from a disease process that has up to a 50% mortality in patients who have septic shock. Now the article that I'm talking about is free, and the link is in the description box below. It was published online in the Journal of Critical Care in December, it's December right now, uh, 2017, and it's actually supposed to come out in print in February 2018, but we're getting a head start on this because it's so cool. The title of the article is Vitamin C, The Next Step in Sepsis Management. A big hat tip to the people in Georgetown and George Washington University for coming up with this study because I'm not a researcher, so I depend on guys like you, thank you very much for doing research, and then I can learn from it. As a big disclaimer, this video is being shot in December 2017, so if you watch this video, in the future, data changes, so make sure you keep up with the data, and that's the reason why I read so much. My journal club-ish is not a journal club, it's journal club-ish, so it's not going to be the in-depth type of discussion you want, but what I, want to, what I want to convey to you is basically the key points of this article and why I think it's cool and how it's going to change my practice. Now, this is a short article. I have a very short attention span. It's five pages, but when you cut out all the figures and the references and the abstract and all that, it's only like three and a half pages, so it's a quick read. It's free. The link is below. Go check it out for yourself. Why am I excited about this article? Well, first of all, it's regarding patients who are in septic shock. That's my bread and butter. That's what I do every day. Now, the statistics on septic shock is that people who are in septic shock have up to a 50% mortality. We need to cut that down. We need to get better on this. And there have been a ton of medications and products that have basically failed. So is vitamin C the answer to all our problems? Maybe not, maybe so, but this is heading us in the right direction. In addition to that, as I mentioned, any advancement with regards to sepsis management is gonna have me super excited. Now, my first contact, in all honesty, about vitamin C in sepsis management came from Paul Merrick's study, which I will also link in the description box below, so make sure you check that out. But he basically used uh, vitamin C, thiamine, and steroids to cut his mortality down significantly in his ICU. But he had tip to all those people as well for coming up with that study. I'm not going to discuss all the intricacies of that paper in this, and, you know, there's a lot of controversy with regards to everything that transpired over there, but, hey, I like it. Another reason why I'm such a fan of vitamin C is because it's cheap. Now, I've actually got the information from my particular shop, which I'm not going to go ahead and disclose, but I will tell you, compared to a lot of things we do in the ICU, vitamin C is cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. That's why I like it and that's why I want it to succeed. Is that a bias for me? Perhaps, but I want it to succeed. Now, starting off with the introduction to the article, why did the authors want to pursue looking into vitamin C? Well, we know that sepsis as a whole is not necessarily just the bacteria causing, causing a problem and causing an infection, but it's also the overbearing immune system actually harming the body in the process of fighting this particular infection. It's a huge inflammatory process that's abnormal and it's overly exaggerated in these patients. Now, our sepsis bundles, which basically include antibiotics in the first hour, the 30 cc's per kilogram of IV fluid resuscitation, etc., 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 none of it targets the inflammatory process, the over-inflammatory process that's seen in sepsis in our patients. Also, our antibiotics, some, some of them are bactericidal and therefore cause destruction of these bacteria, causing more inflammation on top of that. So, it's just too much inflammation. We've got to find a way to bring that down and tone that down. So we need to find a way to get this inflammation and oxidative stress down to a manageable level, and we honestly don't have any therapy for it. And there have been numerous amounts of therapies that have been tried in the past, however, they just, have not, they just haven't panned out. And here's a short list of things that have been tried out in the past that haven't worked. There are three key functions that vitamin C is supposed to have an effect on which help us out in sepsis and patients who are in septic shock. The first one is that it's an antioxidant. The second one is that it helps produce vasopressors. You know that stuff that we give to people? Yeah, helps produce it endogenously. And the third is that it helps out with this immune response. And I'm holding up five fingers, but I meant to say three. As an antioxidant, it helps produce vasopressin, cortisol, and other catecholamines. We need these three things. And vitamin C helps produce this. It also modulates the immune system through iron and folate. It prevents damage to cellular proteins. It also maintains the integrity of the endothelium, which basically keeps the capillaries from leaking and keeps you from third spacing. It improves microvascular perfusion and it reduces inflammatory modulators, therefore also keeping the integrity together of that endothelium. 
with regards to vasopressor th synthesis, we know that vitamin C is a cofactor needed for the production of vasopressin. You know, that stuff that we give to people exogenously, well now, with vitamin C, we can help the body produce it naturally. It also is a cofactor for other, other catecholamine synthesis. We have a body of data that shows that your endogenous vasopressin synthesis in sepsis decreases. So, with the addition of vitamin C, theoretically, this should allow for more production of vasopressin. It is known that the vitamin C levels in the body, I guess if I go like this, yeah, the vitamin C levels in the body decrease as somebody goes into shock or gets very sick. Vitamin C is required in two steps to produce catecholamines endogenously. It's also necessary in the production of dopamine. It also modulates the alpha receptors and the beta receptors, which are the things that we're targeting with such medications as epinephrine and norepinephrine and phenylephrine when we're treating patients who are in shock. The third component that I mentioned was vitamin C's effect on immune function. Three things that vitamin C helps to kill bugs. First, it improves chemotaxis. Second, supports lymphocytic proliferation. proliferation. Third, it assists in the oxidative neutrophilic killing of bacteria by leukocytes. Three babies right there. Now you might say to me, Eddie, this sounds great. I love all this stuff. Sign me up for vitamin C, but where's the data? Well, there's not a lot of data right now, and that's part of the problem behind all this. There are five studies, and all of them have a very small sample size. In my personal practice, I have an N of 1, and they did, they did well, but I don't know whether that was just the way I took care of the patient, or it happened to be the vitamin C. I'm not sure, but here's the data. As I mentioned, polymeric study with an N of 42 is now the most substantial data that we have with regards to treating people with vitamin C. But in addition to that, you have to think that these people also got uh, stress dose steroids, so to speak, and they also got thiamine. You know, part of the limitation of using vitamin C, as I mentioned, is that there's no data. Well, there's no randomized, double-blind, placebo trial, you know, those big sexy studies that are multi-centered and all that. That just doesn't exist. So hopefully in the near future, we're going to have some of that data to help substantiate our desire to use vitamin C in the ICU. Also, all the studies that were reviewed have different doses, different intervals of timing of people getting vitamin C, and they're just not, you just can't put them in the same box. But hey, if you're into research, this could be a particular location or a particular study that you could do at your shop that will be very influential and very helpful to the world of critical care. So the conclusion of these authors with regards to the study, and I'm going to read this to you, is that there's a lack of large multi-center randomized control trials investigating the utility of vitamin C in treating sepsis, which leaves doubt as to the strength of the currently available data and its actual efficacy and effectiveness in treating patients. In other words, Further evidence is required before it can be reasonably used as an adjuvant treatment to sepsis. But hopefully we're going to get this sometime soon. Lastly, how does this affect my practice? Well, I would love to use it. I know how much it costs. It's not expensive at all compared to a lot of other things that we give to patients. I'm dying to see some more data. I've actually tried, as I mentioned before, the Merrick protocol on a patient who was in septic shock refractory to everything I did. They did well. I don't know if it was because of the way I resuscitated them or their... Or their protoplasm, I have no idea, but they got over the whole septic shock insult. Uh, and of one is worthless, basically. But I'm excited to try something new. So I hope that you all learned something from this article that I quickly reviewed. I hope I didn't go too fast. Um, I also hope I didn't take very long because I don't know how long this video is going to be. But nevertheless, click the subscribe link below and uh, check out the articles yourself. I definitely recommend you doing that because that's the way that you get the most out of this data. And once again, hat, hat tip and thumbs up to the, to the authors because they're doing research and I'm not. I'm just reading things and sharing it all with you. Thanks a lot. And uh, also, I got a lot of subscribers. I jumped up a significant amount from the last time that I posted a video. So thank you very much to all our new subscribers. And uh, hopefully these uh, articles will be very helpful because I plan on doing more of these videos. Take care.